Let's learn about forms in React.js. React also uses forms to allow users to interact with the web page. HTML form elements work a little bit differently from other DOM elements in React. In HTML, form elements such as input, text area and select typically maintain their own state and update it based on the user input. In React, mutable state is typically kept in the state property of the components and only updated with the setState method. Let's understand this by an example. Create one file demoform.js and create a class component using React snippets by writing just rcc. Give this form any title, let's say a signup form. We can create forms same as in HTML. First, we will create only one field to test how this works. Create a label for name. And also create one input field. This input field must have a name attribute. Keep its type as a text. Next, create one button using input. Make sure you set its type to submit. You can set any value here like a submit or a register. Let's import this form in the app.js file. As I said earlier, React form doesn't maintain internal state. So we have to store each information in separate state. Create one state in the constructor, a state for a name and initialize it with an empty string. Now let's create one method called handle change. Using this method, we will manipulate state of the input fields. We have to pass E as an event in this method. And from event, we can extract name and value of a particular input field by using e.target.name and E dot target dot value. Let's log this values. We have to call this handle change method when an on change event happens in the input field. As you can see here in the console, there are name of the input field and we are also getting its value. Let's set this new value to name state using set state method. Now for on submit event of the form, we will create a new method called handle submit. In this method, we have to pass event. Now in any submit method to prevent default submit events like automatic reload, we have to use event.prevent default method at the beginning. Just like this. Let's alert the name state. Call the handle submit method here. And it is displaying the name in the alert. Let's add some more field such as email. Make sure to set its type and name to email. For this new email input field, we have to create a new state. So create one email state and initialize it with an empty string. And in the handle change, we have to put a condition like if name equals name then we will update the name state and if e.target.name is equals email then we will update the email state add this email in the alert It's working fine.
Let's add select field for gender. Create a new select field and add name and on change event to it. In the select field, we have to create a few options. Create three options like male, female and others. Create a state and make a changes in the handle change method for gender as we did for the name and email. And it's displaying everything as expected. Now this method of setting state in handle change is not convenient if we have a lots of form fields. So instead of creating this individual states, create only one state called form. And inside this form state, paste this states as an object just like this. Remove all this. First, we will store previous state values using a spread operator. Then we will change object inside the form state. And also inside it, we will again get the previous values and update the values again. Let's log this form state. Let's understand this quickly. First, we have created a single form state and inside of that state, we have created one object having three different key value pairs. Now to update this form state, we have to fetch previous state value using a spread operator so that they don't get overwritten. And we did same for the object of a form state. Let's try it out. And it's working great. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.